Hi everyone. So I know that a lot of you have had quite a few of your customers complaining about curing issues with Integra, whether it just be blockages in the end of the cartridge or patchy cure, or particularly lately we've had a lot of people saying that Zero is prone to yellowing. Um, so I've put this video together for you to, to try and show you um, what causes the issue, so what, what to do and, and what not to do. I've done this multiple times and every time I follow the incorrect procedure um, I get the same incorrect results. When you follow the correct procedure you get the correct results. And what this video proves is oh, this is all using the same single cartridge of glue and you can see that using different um, application techniques, correct and incorrect, you can get correct and incorrect results. So while I was locked up in home isolation up here in Queensland, I managed to do these videos. So mind my hairdo, I couldn't get to the hairdresser. But what you've just seen me do is I did the correct purge procedure in the beginning here. Dispense a small amount of material out of the cartridge before you put the tip on, just to make sure that both the resin and the hardener are flowing. And then put the tip on and dispense a little bit more material out of the end of, tip, at the, end of the tip, just to make sure you're getting a good mix before you actually do your application. Um, and later in the video, just so that you can, because you're not here to be able to touch the glue, um, I go along and tap on it with a paddle pop stick, just so that you can hear um, where the glue is curing nice and crisp and where it's a bit soft or, or even in some cases as a liquid. So the first bead that I just put down was using a nice steady uh, normal medium trigger pressure not too excessive and what I'm about to do is move on to the second bead now and use an excessive trigger pressure and that way we'll be able to see the difference between the curing and the first bead and uh, the difference to the second bead and see if we have uh, better or worse results either way and the other thing that we're going to be able to see from this test uh, with the excessive trigger pressure that causes the mixing of material in the end of the cartridge that causes the, the blocked cartridges. You'll see when I take the static mixer off this cartridge it's got a, a hardened piece of material on the end of it. Okay so we're right on 15 minutes in um, after I finished with the gun. So if we look at the first bead, that's now just starting to gel off. At the beginning, obviously the, the first bit will be, the first part of the application is going to gonna start curing first. And then it does start to get softer, so we'll see how that cure develops. Um, it, it does feel to me like it's, it is doing what it's meant to do and it's getting gradually softer as I move through. But let's see how that develops over the next 10 to 15 minutes. And now for the second bead, where I went way too hard on the trigger pressure, you can see here this bulk mass here has actually already started to cure. Mind you, where I did it correctly, this is still soft. So I would suggest that this has got, this blob here actually has too much hardener in it. Because uh, this was done after this mass here, where, I, where it was done correctly with a, a nice medium trigger pressure. And this is still just going to a gel now where this is almost rock hard. If we go along now and we have a bit of a look, this is quite jelly here. And that's definitely softer just here. We're going back to jelly again. Jelly, that's definitely softer there, look at that. So this is jelly, this is soft here. So we can see the patchy cure that's starting to develop. But again, we'll see how this develops over the next 10 or 15 minutes. back to our first bead and we're going here and the sign of it being patchy I would say not that's much more gradual a nice gradient from you know starting to cure up this end and as we move further this way it's moving into more of a gel so let's leave it for another five minutes and see how it continues to develop okay so we're a further five minutes in is actually now 
starting to sound crispy. As we move along, starting to get softer. It is a touch patchy, but it is all curing. Now we're starting to get quite soft in the thinner mass. And over here in the bigger, the, the thicker mass, where it's going to generate more heat and accelerate the cure. That's all well and truly on its way. Now if we go to where the trigger pressure was too high, it's still quite soft. I note that these are these are back to back. And those two sections are pretty much back to back. Aha. Uh -huh. So we've got a patch here that's curing nowhere near at the rate either side of it. Move along, quite soft. So this is not quite as bad as the one that I, I did the other day, um, but you can still definitely see that there's some patchy cure issues going on um, where the trigger pressure was too high. And I'm not a stonemason that's lifting around 400 kilo slabs of stone every day. I'm probably not as strong as some of these blokes. So if they were going a bit harder than what I am, they might have more issues than what I'm experiencing here. So what we're about to see here when I take the static mixer off the cartridge is the hardened material. I'll come closer to the camera fill so we can see it. Hardened material in the end of the static mixer. And I'll explain that a little bit later in the video as to how that happens. So what I'm doing here is repurging the gun correctly so without the static mixer on making sure that both resin and hardener are flowing properly We're allowing the plungers to even up in the cartridge and make sure that the the guns relaxed and it's square and even putting a new clear mixing tip on purging it out correctly and then I'm about to apply a third bead just to show you that I can go from the first bead being correct second bead having issues and then the third bead correct again using the correct procedure all out of the same cartridge so we can go from correct to incorrect to correct results with the same cartridge of glue so it cannot be that it's faulty glue it's the process of application that changes the result
Okay, so again, it's now been uh, about 15 minutes since I put this last bead down. And we can see Okay, so maybe a touch patchy here, but we'll see how that develops. Just that little patch in the middle there that's hard and the rest is that soft spot in the middle. The rest of it's pretty gradual though, but a slight degree of that is not totally abnormal. Okay, so we're at about the 20 minute mark. So a little bit softer, softer. Softer. It's all curing up pretty nicely. Okay, so the last of our three beads is pretty much all cured. So you can see at the beginning, the first bead that we did cured pretty nicely. It was a touch patchy, the same as the third bead, but nothing to be concerned about. On the second bead where the trigger pressure was too high, um, this one actually went better than the one I did the other day, but you can see this little spot in the middle here had a real issue with that. It has actually cured up now. It's probably uh, 45 minutes to an hour since I did this bead. Um, it has actually set up, but you can see that it was definitely more patchy in this middle one than the two here that were done, the two outside ones that were done correctly. Um, so we could say that this one was correctly. This one's a little bit wrong and you can see the result this one was done correctly again. Um, what I'll do now is I'll let this all fully cure, especially in the tip here, and we'll pull this tip off and see if there's the um, little hardened piece of material that's, that's mixed in the, um, in the end of the nozzle here. Uh, I think that if we've done it correctly, you shouldn't ever have mixed material in the end of the nozzle of the cartridge. And one last thing, really handy tip, this is um, just some 5mm polypropylene uh, board that I've had for a few years. Polypropylene is a certain type of plastic that acrylics um, or methacrylates like Integra, um, all of your polyesters and vinyl esters like Tanax, Megapoxy, none of those glues will stick to this type of material. So it's really handy, I use this for all my glue demos. And what's really cool about it you can see just how easy it is to clean up. If you've got cured material on it, obviously the best thing to do is to wait for it to cure. But once it's cured on there, it just flicks straight off, nice and simple. So I'll finish clearing this off and we'll let this fully cure. Uh, we'll see how it's gone in the end of the tip here. And then I'm gonna do one more run uh, doing everything really wrong. We're going to do is too much trigger pressure straight off the bat and then what I'll do is I'll let it partially cure in the tip and then I'll use even more trigger pressure to force the glue out past the veins here and we'll see what the results are. Okay, so we've cleaned up our board uh, and this mix has now had way longer on this cartridge than what this has, or this did. So it's had much more of an opportunity to set up um, the hardened material either up inside the end of the nozzle here or up inside the end of the cartridge. So, and you can see that almost all the way down to the base, the glue's actually contracted away from the inner wall of the nozzle, which just tells you that it is curing in the tip. So, moment of truth. Hang on, hold the camera. So, you can see no sign of any hardened material in the end of the nozzle or in the end of the cartridge. You can see that that's still trying to find something a little bit sharp. You can still see that that's nice and liquid in there. A bit hard to get that in there, but I can tell you that it is nice and liquid in there. So what we'll do now is I'll set the camera back up 
and we'll do everything completely wrong. We're not gonna purge, we're gonna be too heavy on the trigger and we're gonna let it semi-cure in the tip and then we're gonna force glue out past the semi-cured material in the mixing nozzle and we'll see what happens. So obviously what I've done now is let it sit for five to 10 minutes. So it started to partially cure in the mixing tip. And now I'm going to use a really excessive amount of trigger pressure uh, on the gun. And with the partial blockage in the tip, it's creating quite a lot of back pressure on the cartridge, on the gun, everything's warping and moving around and causing a, a bad mix ratio. It actually wasn't blocked up too bad in this instance, but it's enough that you'll see the issues it creates. Okay, so we'll just have a bit of a look at the cure. On the first bead with too much pressure, a bit patchy, quite patchy considering it's been, yeah, it's been well over 20 minutes now on this first bead and it's very patchy. So I would say those patches where it's still quite soft that you can see would be falling, those soft patches would potentially be falling out of spec. So they might get away with it, but it's certainly not ideal. And on the second bead, it's just starting to cure now. So that should be nicely set up in the tip and we might go another go again. So you can see this is even patchy. I mean, that's rock hard there and that's still liquid here. So this was pushing out through a uh, partially blocked nozzle. And we'll do a third one now where the nozzle is really blocked and we'll see how it goes. All right, it actually blocked up in the tip already. You can see in the middle of the tip. Let's see if we can get, see if we can get a focus on that. But you can see in the middle of the tip, it's starting to cure. You can see it's shrinking away from the inner walls of the tube. So right in the middle there, it's actually curing. So it's blocked up completely. So just check on how our cure is going. Absolutely rock hard. And that is still liquid. And we're probably 20 to 25 minutes into this cure now. Rubbery here, very soft through the middle. Rubbery actually starting to set there. Rubbery, rock hard. And it's quite liquidy through the middle here. And rubbery again. Rubbery. Quite liquid up the top here. Liquid. Rubbery. Going back to liquid again. And rock hard right at the end. Let it sit for a few more minutes and we'll have another look. I just want to show you using my rudimentary ruler here, the difference in the plunger height. So if I push that in until it hits the bottom of the plunger. And I can hold my finger on that fingernail right level on the end of the cartridge and we compare that to the resin portion. You can see the difference in height there bit hard to see on the camera but it's probably a good four millimeters which doesn't maybe doesn't sound like much but when you consider what four millimeters of height in volume would be in the resin side compared to the hardener it's pretty significant because you've got to remember it's a 10 to 1 ratio so if there's a difference in four millimeters um, in height on the resin side you can multiply that volume by 10. You can 
compared to the hardener side. So we've, we've dispensed um, quite a bit more hardener compared to uh, resin in this case. And that's due to the, the pressure that we've created on the gun, which has warped the cartridge and the gun um, and caused an uneven plunger height. So we're at the 45 minute mark now since I dispensed the second bead. And you can see the course right at the front, it's nice and rock hard. And then right next to it, at 45 minutes, it's still a long way from even thinking about going off. Uh, right in the middle here, that's, that's completely liquid at 45 minutes. So that's way out of specification. Um, and even if that does go hard now, um, because it's um, underdosed with hardener, um, it's extremely unlikely that that would actually develop its full strength. We can see it's hard over here and in the middle, it's still liquid. Yep, going back to liquid again, hard again. Rubbery, hard. That's uh, a little bit rubbery, but still quite soft. And hard up towards the end. And so when I did my um, this test the other day, what I did was after I did the bead of glue where I'd forced it out through a partially blocked mixing tip, I actually put a new mixing tip on and didn't purge it, didn't reset the height of the plungers in the bottom. Um, and I, the next bead that I did actually went really yellow, which is what Steve Moltari has been particularly complaining about. Some of his customers have had that issue. Um, so we might try that now. We'll put a, a, now that we've got uneven plunger heights in the tube, we'll put a new mixing tip on without purging it and see if the uneven mix ratio um, gives us that yellowing effect that Steve's been complaining about that I had happened the other day. There we go, right on about the 12 minute mark. That's really starting to turn yellow. And that second patch just started, as I said that. And you can see, this is the one that I prepared earlier. Uh, these, these outside beads were already cured. Um, I was just dispensing the rest of the material so I could bin it. Uh, and you can see that the final bead that I did, again, same as what I've done over here after putting too much trigger pressure on the gun and then not resetting the plunger heights gives you a bad mix ratio and you end up with yellowing. So I would almost, I mean, that's the second time that I've repeated it doing, doing the same um, faulty process, giving the same result. Okay. 
we'll let this cure up and see exactly how yellow it ends up going. And by the way, oh, we're on the liquid at the beginning. And this was the second bead and that is rock hard and very hot. Rubbery in the middle, hard, rubbery, 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 liquid, liquid, and back to the bead that we did second with a partially blocked nozzle. This is coming up close to an hour now. That is still 100% liquid. So certainly pushing through a partially blocked nozzle can be done, and I know plenty of stonemasons will do it, and definitely, almost every time, repeatedly, causes patchy or even incomplete cure. And then further, when they decide that the nozzle's so blocked up that they can't push through it anymore, and they've completely warped the gun, they've pushed the plungers up into the tube unevenly, and then they put a new mixing nozzle on, clear it, and not only is it a bit patchy, but because this has been overdosed with hardener quite seriously, um, we've ended up with an awful, this is transparent white, so you can imagine how awful that would look on a piece of stone, uh, just like that. And it stinks too. It, it's actually, it, this is actually starting to burn. Um, and if it was really, really quite uh, seriously overdosed with hardener, and if it was in a much thicker section than this, there is actually the possibility that it could catch fire if it gets hot enough. Um, shouldn't really ever get a mix that bad out of ratio with a cartridge system, um, but it is possible. So something to keep in mind. So once again, this entire video has been taken using only one cartridge of glue. All, all these beads are coming out of the same cartridge. So what I'm about to do now, after I've just had a patchy cure, I've just had a bead go yellow on me um, by using bad processes, what I'm doing now is using the correct processes again. So purging correctly, which will allow the, the plungers to uh, level out and reset height let everything relax and come back into the happy zone and I'll put another bead down and prove that even after having some poor results if you go back to using the correct procedure even on the exact same cartridge of glue you'll get the correct results again. Also notice while I put this final bead down sitting on the table closest to the camera is the bead that went yellow that I did from the, the test a few days before this one. And you can see how bowed it is. Um, when the glue gets really, really hot, um, not only does it cause yellowing, but it actually causes it to shrink uh, much more than it normally would. So you can, you can see the bowed effect from here, and that could be an issue if you're doing a mitre um, and you had a reasonable size fillet on the back side of the mitre, which you should, but if you've got it um, shrinking excessively, it could also pull the mitre out of square. Um, just, it's not something that I've had too many problems with and I don't hear of anyone complaining about it, but it might be a handy thing for you to know one day. Okay, so just to give a final conclusion, bead number one, was applied with a clean mixing tip and too much trigger pressure. Um, this has been sitting now for um, oh, probably a couple of hours now um, and it has all eventually cured. So chances are most of the time they'll get away with it, they'll get lucky, most of it will cure. Uh, patches will just be a little bit slower than others. Uh, hopefully you shouldn't see any discolouring or anything like that. But again, they're probably running the gauntlet and it's probably luck of the draw. Then we move on to bead two, where I dispense through a partially blocked uh, mixing nozzle. Within minutes, that was hard. And like I said, this is several hours on now and that in the middle is still liquid. That has been sitting for hours. That is a recall job. 
or, a, or a, you know, an apron that's fallen off or something. Uh, and this, the nozzle that actually pushed this through, um, as I was dispensing, I could actually feel the pressure through here. I could feel that the, it was quite hard to squeeze the, the adhesive out. And as I moved on, I actually felt the nozzle did clear itself, so it got a little bit better. So this one actually wasn't too bad. I've actually done it before where it's been much, much worse than this. Um, and as you can see, the rest of it has managed to cure. Um, hasn't discolored or anything like that. So, um, but we did also get the um, blockage in the, uh, in the end of the cartridge from the plungers, but um, going into uneven height. And what happens is, because you've got the two different plungers at uneven heights, if the hardener shoots up higher than the resin plunger, it pushes the hardener up around the corner and back down into the resin chamber. And when the, the gun flicks over and pushes the plungers back the other way, the opposite happens. It pushes the resin up, cut, hits the blockage and basically turns around and comes back down into the hardener chamber. And what that does is give you mixed adhesive um, down in the, in the ends of the mixing nozzles and in the end of the cartridge. And then the final, or well, the third, dispense I did after over um, pressuring the gun and the cartridge and causing uneven plunger heights and bad, bad mix ratios. I then put on a clear mixing tip again so without but without purging so what I didn't do was didn't reset the height of the plungers and make them even. So even though I had free flowing adhesive uh, I still had a, an off mix ratio as the plungers came through, as, as the plunger moves through and resets and they become level again, you get a bad mix ratio and we've got yellow um, adhesive that Steve Moltari has been complaining about. And like I said, that's actually done the same thing twice on two different days and got same faulty process, same faulty adhesive. And just to really hammer the point home, uh, in that last video, I actually, after having uh, discolored resin, I had to finish off the glue in the tube before I put it in the bin anyway. So what I did was, you saw I took the um, old mixing nozzle off, purged it, so I've reset the height of the plungers, and then put on a clear mixing nozzle, purged it, so I've done the proper process. And this has now been sitting for just over 15 minutes, coming up to 20, and it's perfect. So what I've proved is that this and this, out of the same cartridge as this, is not faulty glue, it's faulty dispensing process.